Okay, so um, I imagine uh, many of us uh, have been probably doing somewhat of this for, for a bit of time now. Uh, um, and it's going to become ever so more important going forward with Apple, particularly even with the M1s. Now, first off, just very basically, you know, what is signing, right? Well, it's a form of validation. Uh, so signing a package, right? Um, or a configuration profile ensures the integrity of a package or a configuration profile, minimizing the possibility of manipulation uh, post its initial creation and signing. So signing creates a linked chain of trust between Apple, Jamf, and the computer, particularly if you're going to be talking about something like um, say a pre-stage enrollment, right? Something that Apple has a hand in when you're doing this whole little three-way handshake, right? So you have a DEP machine that, you know, first gets started up and what's the very first thing that it does? It calls out to Apple. It says, hey, who am I, right? And, and Apple says, oh, well, this is what you are and this is where you need to go, right? And it sends you back to uh, the, the organization and then ultimately back to the, the local machine. Now, being that Apple has to have a, well, is having a hand in that. It, it wants to see that that uh, pre-stage enrollment package is signed, right? So uh, that's one of the things that we're gonna be talking about here today. So, <clears throat> and let's see now, what was the next one? So, well, I think we, said kind of why it's important, right? So, well, here's, here's some of the things that uh, we've started seeing since, I guess, Sierra, right? Uh, our happy friend, uh, Gatekeeper here. And um, it comes up telling you that, hey, I don't know what this package is. And it kind of gives you a stop there, right? Now, when we're talking about the older OSs like uh, Sierra and such, if you remember, um, when you would go inside system preferences and security and privacy, you would have three options there, which used to say, uh, allow apps downloaded from App Store. Uh, the next option was allow apps downloaded from App Store and identified developers. And the last one was allow uh, apps downloaded from anywhere. Well, with the advent of Mojave, that anywhere went away. So no matter what, there's going to be some kind of user intervention. And ultimately, if you're going to be deploying a package and if this is going to be something going on in your corporate environment, you really don't want to have to have users clicking on things left and right. You need to kind of minimize that. Um, otherwise, they're going to just stop, try to stop things from happening or, or such or whatever, right? So, so that's, uh, that's it with with that with Gatekeeper. Now, uh, again, why is it important? Well, Gatekeeper protects the Mac, as we all know. Um, it's for apps distributed outside of the App Store. Um, it's also used for push for our push notification and cloud kit, but most importantly, our pre-stage enrollments to an MDM, right? And um, this was something that came uh, right from the Jamf guide that you guys can see there in the corner where it uh, states that packages must be signed using a certificate that is trusted by the device at time of enrollment. It is recommended that the package is signed with a certificate generated from either Jamf Pro built in CA or from the Apple developer program account. Now, there is a little there's something of importance here when you're saying you can actually even sign it from the Jamf Pro built-in CA. Um, when you do sign something from the Jamf Pro built-in CA, you're only establishing a level of trust between Jamf and that computer. If it's something that, that Apple has a hand in again, right? Like a uh, pre-stage enrollment package, it's not going to work. You're going to have problems. You're going to see that package is going to fail to install, uh, even if you're pushing it to Jamf, because Apple, again, has a hand in it. So that's when you really need to begin to think about signing that package with an Apple developer account 
um, specifically the developer ID installer account. Okay, so let's go on from here. Now, why signing profiles important? Well, now this was a, a regular XML that you can see here. And well, now it looks a little different. Um, up top, you see that there's some happy code there and that's all part of the signing process. Um, now, uh, once a configuration profile is signed, it's marked as verified for the end user in the system preferences. Uh, you get that nice little green verified, right? So the user doesn't have to click on it and say approve. Uh, it protects the profile when uploaded to Jamf. Because what happens is when you have a profile that's not signed, Jamf goes to ultimately certify it with its own CA. So it, in, in a lot of cases, this can be okay. And the profile is not gonna get changed that much and it still should work fine. But um, if you're gonna be talking about kernel extensions, particularly system extensions now for M1s, that's a problem. So you really need to have those ones signed before you bring them up to Jamf because if Jamf touches it, then chances are it's not going to work properly. And the good thing is once it goes up to Jamf and you already had it signed, it's obviously read only. You can remove the signature of course, and then you can try to you make changes from within Jamf to the XML. But um, if it was signed, it's gonna tell you right off that it's read only. So now we're going uh, forward. Now we're gonna be talking about the uh, creating an Apple developer account. And Chris, I believe is going to be taking lead on this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one over. Thanks a lot, Peter. So I just wanted to talk about the process of creating an Apple developer account, because as we were planning out this presentation, um, that was a missing piece we didn't have. So I went through the process of creating it, um, mostly because I think Peter wanted me to do it because there was a $99 cost to it, uh, which I found out <laughs> after I got into it. <laughs> And it's but, been a while uh, since I did it anyway. The last time I had created one was 2015. So I was sure the process had changed. So I didn't want to just speak on something where I, I wasn't current, right? Yeah. No, I wanted to. Yeah, I, we needed one anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Sure. So creating an Apple developer account is a lot like creating an Apple business manager account if you've ever gone through that process. And if you haven't, it's a pretty in-depth process. It's not as simple as it first seems, especially based on the complexity of your organization. Um, for a company like ours, it wasn't too difficult. We don't have a super complex corporate structure. Um, I know most of this information anyway, and I have this set up. Uh, if you're a much bigger company, sometimes it's, it's kind of confusing of like, oh, who has access to the legal entity status? Who's a legal binding authority? that type of stuff, that can be really hard to get. Um, but yeah, what do you need? A DUNS number is the first thing. You can go to the DUNS and Broad Street website in order to do that. Uh, basically just verifies your business is actually a business and actually who you say that you are. Um, yeah, and then you also need an Apple ID with two-factor authentication set up. Um, and this needs to be like, if, if this Apple ID, I think was used for Apple Business Manager, I'm not sure if you can use it for the Apple developer account. I may be wrong about that though. So don't quote me on that, but you may need to set up a separate Apple ID for this specifically. Uh, if you wanna to go to the next slide, Peter. Mm -hmm. And what does this process look like? Um, since I just went through this, I can talk you through it. Uh, first of all, you go to developer.apple.com forward slash enroll. Um, you enter in a lot of information into here. Um, and it, well, actually first, once you get through there, you have to log in with your Apple ID. Uh, your Apple ID has to have two-factor authentication set up. So you have to set that up if you haven't yet. Um, and then you'll get into the Apple developer account portal. It gets kind of a little confusing here. And I'm gonna have some follow-up documentation that walks through this process. Um, but you go to enroll and then it's gonna try to get you to download an app in order to go through the enrollment but you can also go to continue with web enrollment. Uh, Cause most of the time people that are down getting part of the Apple developer account are developing apps and not just signing packages. So they make you, I think install Xcode or something like that. 
it's a lot easier to just go through the web enrollment. So go through that process if you can. Um, then you will receive an email from Apple with whatever account you set up your email with, and you have to review the program license agreement. Um, at that point, that's when you pay $99. And then a day after I did that, I actually got a call from Apple. Uh, so a call from a random number that ended up being Apple and they were just verifying my account information. Um, so make sure you take a call from a random number so you can actually get that set up. So as you can see, this is a bit more of an in-depth process. Uh, don't be expected to be up and running within a day. Um, set aside two to four weeks to get this process done. Um, and with that, I'll I'll hand it back over to Peter to talk about, oh, I actually, oh. user permissions. I was gonna talk about this, oh, okay. though I'm sure we can tag team it. Um, yeah. So th this is another part that, that's kind of weird. So, because typically in an organizational structure, like with any of the companies I work with, um, if they have an Apple developer account, I am not the account holder. Um, so typically I go to someone else to get things signed. Um, if you can though get a developer account, you can sign configuration profiles. Uh, you need a developer account in order to sign that. And that's kind of like a normal extra account onto the Apple developer account. However, if you wanna sign packages, you can only be only the account holder can actually sign packages. So you have to be the account holder of that Apple developer account and you can't have two account holders. So if someone originally set that up, they're probably not going to hand you over their credentials. And that's the situation Peter's in, correct, Peter? Correct. And usually what you would want to do when you were creating, say, this um, your developer account, and I, I had done this way back, is you don't create it as a particular person, but you have a generic name of the company and the email address that's say um, just the, the one or two engineers will end up using to log into it um, so that more than one person has access to it. Because if you have someone in legal setting it up and doing that, then every time they're, they're going to be the account holder. And they're not going to probably uh, give you their all their information. So you would have to be shaking them down to get them to sign your package because the only person that can sign that package is the one that has the developer ID installer certificate type you will see. That's the only one that can sign it. Now, the account holder can create multiple other kinds of accounts, meaning also the Mac development certificate type accounts and others but the only one that can sign a package, again, is the one that is the account holder, which is the developer ID installer type. So um, when your organization does go to set this up, ensure they do, do it in a generic fashion, and then, then you'll be golden. So very important. Oh, uh, one other thing. Now at the bottom, you're gonna see it says, certificates cannot be exported. Um, and used on another Mac. Now, what this means, like, let's say the, uh, the account holder, which was someone else decided, hey, okay, don't worry. I created the certificate and for the developer ID installer, and I'm gonna, I exported it out of my keychain and I'm gonna give it to you. And when you take that and you go to put it onto another machine, it does not work. You already broke that chain of trust because it was created um, on, that one, on that only machine and it was, uh, you know, um, it, once once that chain of trust is broken, you try to export to another one, it's, it's simply not going to work. Uh, simple as that. So just remember that it, um, the machine that you brought that cert down onto is the only one that's going to be able to sign packages. So, um, and that's that. Now, uh, Chris, do you want me to actually go through uh, creating it in, the uh, Apple developer account right now, showing them what that's like, or? Um... I think the next slide talks through the process. Um, go to the next oh, slide right more? now. Okay. The signing the process. Actual yep. signing process. Okay, so here we go, right, with the CSR. Okay, so what you're gonna simply do here, um, 
is you're going to yeah you can demo this too to peter things. on your computer so you don't need to go into too much yeah, yeah i mean I'll go demo. over it quickly but then yeah you can yeah so i'm too. gonna i'm gonna speak what it is and then i'll actually show it so you're going to use keychain to create a csr uh you're going to create a developer id installer certificate or if you you may go to create the other type of certificate if you're only going to sign a um, say config profile you could do the mac development type one as well you could create that kind right but again that's only for configuration profiles um so now you're going to use the uh let's see apple developer account to sign add the sign certificate back to keychain and then you're going to import that into composer and then you'll be able to sign packages all right so let me minimize this screen oh what did i just do sorry <laughs> about that guys uh that wasn't well well back. well peter oh well how do i go back <laughs> oh my god okay so oh, that wasn't do good. the back button I, I i'm trying to escape out of, ah now, uh, now i got it out. hang on, on there we go how to get out of that window all right so <laughs> sorry about that okay so let me just Bring up, bum, 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 bum. where am I? Oh, okay, keychain. <laughs> These are clearly as practiced and well vetted as our JNUC presentations are. We're out here just grinding all the time on making sure these are smooth. Right, here we go. Okay, so what we ultimately want to do here, oh my God, I got too many windows open. All right. You're going to go into keychain access and you're going to say certificate assistant. You're going to request a certificate from a certificate authority, right? And you're going to, again, if you had created that generic email address for your company, um, whatever it is, you know, um, you know, not someone's name, like uh, if you already had like a, Victoria, uh, it could be anything, right? Dot, dot com or whatever the company was. Um, the common name, don't use your own name because this is going to show up in things. Again, use a company name here. CA email address stays blank, okay? So just remember that. CA, uh, and you're gonna save the disk. So once you end, end up saving things to disk, let me just, Give this thing some kind of real name. Oh. Uh, company email. All right. So you just save it to disk and da -da 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 -da. sign a certificate. Yeah, I think I have a couple on my desktop. I'm just going to give it a number four in front of it. I was messing around with it. Okay. And there it is on my desktop. Okay. So now what I do, I am going to back up here. Uh, aha, here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, one other thing to note, you're going to see there's two developer ID installer um, shirts that were made here. You can only make two and then you can't get rid of them once you make them so just remember that until they expire they're going to sit there and then you can get rid of them so uh, mac development ones you can make more of those only two but you can always delete those at any given time so what we're going to do here yeah well i should probably even back up one because the actual screen you're going to look at when you first go into here will be go back to my account come on Will look like this right and you're going to click on certificates identifiers and profiles click your button up here and here is going to tell you what the different types of certificates you can make right um but the only two we're really going to be interested in is going to be right here developer id installer which we already have created so i'm going to create another one just called mac development so this one you can sign uh, configuration profiles with, right? So let's check that. I'm going to say continue and that I'm just going to say choose file. And the one that I just created, 
which was you just do it by date added, which yeah certainly was number four. Okay. I'm gonna say continue. And then I'm just going to say download. And this one I'm gonna call it just number four. Okay, save that to my desktop. Okay, so now once that's saved to my desktop, I want to bring up Composer. Oh no, not a composer yet. Hang on, it's on my desktop. And I am just going to simply double click on that file. Um, so my other screen, you can't see it's just sitting on my desktop, but if I double click on it, it's going to ask me just to sign into it. Keychain, and there we go. Now we have another one that just showed up in here and this should be the one here, right? April 9th today. This one just came and that's when it's expiring, but so this is the one, right? Okay, so we have that in Keychain right now. Now, the one thing you wanna do when you're in here, because it says certificates not trusted, right? So you just wanna go in here and you wanna change this and say, always trust. All right, exit, it's gonna ask you to authenticate again. All right, boom. And now you can see you have the nice little blue plus mark right next to it there. You know it's, you know it's good. Trusted for all users, right? Okay. So then what you do, is we are going to open up Composer and you can go in here and you just go preferences. And, oh, wait, wait a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. We are signing. Well, that's the way we created the, uh, the certificate. Now you're going to see in here, we have multiple certificates, right? Well, I, I do already. Now, if I'm going to sign a package right now, what I would be choosing is the one that is the developer ID installer for a package, okay? You'll see that the others were in here for the Mac developer ones. Now they're gonna be for our mobile configs. So let me make sure I'm going in order with our presentation here because- Yep, this, this is the, the this first is, part of signing. I just uh, want to make packages. sure, okay. The, I, I guess the confusing part, Peter, is you uh, yes. signed it with the Mac developer one. That's the one you added to the keychain, but you had all these other yeah, ones the previously. Only, right. So that's the only one you could create because we had already created the, the other that developer is, ID ones within the, the Apple developer account. We did a little bit too much testing before this presentation. <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to make sure. So you see, because we have both of these ones already created yeah. the developer ID ones, but it creates the exact same way. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the key point. Um, there's no difference in its creation. So, so let's say I just created this one here, which kind of creates the same way and it has to be the developer ID one. All you have to do is make sure it says uh, flat package sign with, right? You just say save. And then when you go to build a package, it will build just like this. You just say build PKG. And I'm just gonna put it on my desktop, right? And this is what's kind of key here now. Now, if I were to open this installer right now, this is what I just created. And you click on this happy little lock here, here's all of our information, everything that we just created. And you're going to see, it is our developer installer ID. And this is the reason why you really wanna also use uh, your generic company name and such, because if you have your personal information in here and everything, it doesn't look good. Um, has all the information. As far as the certificate goes, tells you when it expires. And this certificate, with, with it being signed like this, it will just run, which is the, the best part. You're not going to get any kind of gatekeeper prompts or anything. Um, 
it will just go. So no matter how a user is even going to be utilizing this, even outside of Jamf, it goes. Um, but right now, I'm just going to quit out of this. There we go. OK. So let me bring back up our presentation here. Um, bum, 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 bum. And, and I just want to be cognizant of everyone's mm -hmm. time. I know we're getting kind of towards the end of the hour, as is typical. Um, so we'll we'll continue to move forward and get through the rest of the slides uh, very quickly. Sure. Um, but I want to okay. reach out to see if anyone has any questions so far, and if anyone needs to drop, you know, obviously feel free to drop. And if you do have to drop and you got to get out of here, we will have the recording available if you want to finish the presentation. Um, and you can also throw any questions that maybe you didn't get a chance to ask into the chat. And then we'll we'll be sure to follow up with those either personally if we have to or in the uh, in the Slack workspace. Yep. Uh, to answer okay. your question, um, Smog, uh, is the cost $99 per year? Yes, it's a $99 dollars per year charge so it's not just a one-time fee correct all righty peter the torch is back to you okay. to keep ripping okay so let's move right along uh to signing profiles now as i was just saying uh for signing profiles you can use the uh second here the the, the mac developer account um, to sign if you're just doing prof configuration profiles. So it doesn't have to be the developer ID installer, okay? Um, but you can use the other. So here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it through terminal. And um, some of the things I, I, I want to bring up is now we spoke of why you wanted to do this, but earlier, and again, it's, it all comes down to the whole chain of trust. Right and not having Jamf modify that mobile config that you're trying to put up there. Um, so, okay, let me bring up again the uh, terminal window, and I will. Oh, ah, I did it again. <laughs> let me escape out of this. Excuse me. Here we go. So, what I want to do here is show you what it takes to. Uh, Sign it. Now, again, we had already installed into Keychain that we have a Mac developer uh, certificate in here, right? So we have that in there already. And you want cognizant of the name because you're going to have to use this name um, when you're going to do a signing. So I'm just going to give you this one as an example. So this is very important. So you bring up terminal and uh, there's my terminal. There we go. So what this is all coming down to, and I'm going to show you in here. It is nothing more than uh, this is a, a syntax where you are uh, using security CMS. And you, here's where you have to have your name, Mac developer. So it's going to be just like Mac developer account, right? Just like what we have here. Okay, and you can see even see my example down here where I'm using my own right, and then it's going to be the path to the mobile config, and then dash o, and then the path again to where you want it to save it to. And what I like to do just as good practice, so you don't have one overriding the other, or that it's um, that you keep track of the ones that you create. Is I like to put a date and then I put signed after it. Sometimes when you create it, you got to watch it if you if you don't specify it like this because it could end up putting a dot signed at the end of it and then it, it tells you that it's 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 not a valid mobile config because it's not dot mobile config. So specify the name, specify it properly. Otherwise, it can do its own kind of funny thing when it creates it. Um, okay, so. Let me bring this up. And again, as you can see here, it's um, nothing but my developer ID account right here. And then the path to it, right? There show, and then where it's going to go to. So, OK, 
Okay. Boom. And there it is. It's sitting on my desktop right now. Um, there it is. And this is the signed one. It's going to just kind of go right back there again. Now, there's something quick I want to bring up to everyone about when you do go to upload this to Jamf. Um, it is signed and it's ready to go. But where is my? Oh, here I am. So let me go to Jam Pro here, right? And I'm going to go to my mobile configs. I'm going to say upload. Choose file. And here's the one I just created, right? It says but today, four o'clock. Now, when I go to say open, something funny might end up happening to you. And you might end up getting where it might say, unable to create object from file. It doesn't really give you an idea. Now you think you did something wrong. Thing is, you probably didn't. What you may have already had in here was that mobile configs, especially when you're, when you're testing them and you're creating multiple ones. If you already put one version up, right? And let's say you even just had renamed it and you go to put it up again and try it, you'll get that error because now, now that it was signed, it was, it was signed uh, with, a, with a, a UUID, a universal unique ID. So if you just created another one, it has the same universal unique ID as the first one you had if you're creating multiple versions. So you have to make sure you delete the one that was already in here, which I do have a version of that mobile config I was just going to upload for you. So you have to make sure you delete those. And I'll show you the one that I had in there and what it looks like. So once it's deleted, it will go up and you will not get that error. But I remember it drove me crazy the first couple of times. I was like, what the heck am I doing wrong? Right. And it was nothing more than that. See, this was like one of the ones I was bringing back up. And if I were to say edit, you're going to notice it says that it was a signed profile. So if you want to have even multiple versions up, even in your dev environment, just remember you have to, there are utilities out there to change the UUID, but you could just look that up on, you know, how to change a UUID of something. And you'll be able to have multiple versions of the same mobile config if you were testing it. But preferably if one doesn't work, just delete it and then just put up the other one that you just created, you know, uh, simple as that. 